Hello there and welcome to episode 7 of AK Interactive's basic weathering series. Um, now in this episode we're going to be taking a look at uh, mud splatter which is a really nice easy simple technique to do. Uh, there are again when it comes to mud lots of different ways of doing things but here's one way of doing it. Um, first off um, it's good to use two pigments you want to have sort of like a dry mud splatter and a wet mud splatter so for our dry mud splatter we're going to go for European Earth by AK Interactive and that is AK042 again um, the colours that I'm using here I have already used in the last episode, episode six, for the whole kind of thick mud textured um, type mud. I'm doing this because you don't really want to have um, your, your thick mud being one set of colours and then your mud splatter being another set of colours. Um, you want to sort of keep everything um, kind of uniform to that theatre of war. Um, so again, we're using um, European earth here. And what we're going to do, we're just going to get a bit of water Right, and in one of our little pots here, just like we used in, in the, the mud, thick mud um, textures, we're just going to add a nice bit of water just in here. Right, and we're going to add some uh, weathering plaster as well. The reason for using the weathering plaster is because we're using wo um, water and pigments it's not going to stick that well. I mean, if you touch it after kind of applying it, it's going to just kind of rub off on your hand. It's not going to stick that well. What the plaster will do is will act as like a medium, a sort of like a bonding agent. So, you know, just a little bit of that added to the water as well. And then we're going to get our European Earth and we're now going to just whack in a nice amount of this as well. Right, and you want to get it um, so it's sort of like a, a, a almost like a thick paint, right? But you don't want it to be too thick, right? But a nice bit of pigments in there, and I'm gonna mix this in, make sure it's all good. Uh, and there we go. That's sort of like a nice mixture just in there, right? You still want it to be a wet, but slightly a little bit thick. Okay, and the reason for this is because we're going to splatter it sort of naturally on the model. So let's put this to one side. Let's rip off a bit of a kitchen paper towel. Let's bring in our model that we're going to be working on just here. All right, and what we want to do, let's sort of prop it up at the back a little bit. Right, we want to sort of, um, we don't want the mud splatter to go right up um, the model here because it's just not going to look so natural. So I'm just getting a kitchen paper towel just to guard and protect the um, sort of like the turret side of the model because um, we want to just concentrate down on this area here. So if we bring you in and what we're going to do is move this a bit better on camera. And what we're going to do, get in a simple toothpick and our brush and all we're going to do well it's probably best just to maybe practice a little bit onto a kitchen paper towel just flicking it off of the brush and then you know after you've had a bit of practice we can just start to flick this on the model itself all right just like so and as you can see we're starting to get these nice really cool sort of splatters looking quite nice and natural splattering on the bottom side of the hull representing all that mud splattering up from muddy puddles in the world war one trenches i don't don't feel scared to sort of reapply a bit from our little pot here and i want to sort of get the front a little bit you know because that's where it's sort of really sort of probably flickering up a little bit 
and there we go. We don't want to go too far up, we want to try and keep it sort of nice and natural, right? And just work that nicely along. Again, make sure we're nicely covered up. Maybe bring your head a little bit. Make sure we're nicely covered up. Hold on, let's prop this up. Yeah. Because the last thing you don't want to be doing is going around trying to clean up where the mud splatter's gone that you don't want it. Right. Although you might have to do a little bit of that somewhere along the line. But I mean, there we go. That has given us quite a cool sort of look to it and we've kept our top part nice and clean. You can also do this technique the same to your tracks as well. All right, because it will look really cool again on your tracks if you've got this mud splatter going on as well. So again, we can just flick this on going along our tracks and giving it all sorts of extra oomph to the whole look of our tracks. All right, so hopefully you can see there that gives it, you know, that nice bit of extra um, look to it with all that mud splatter. And it's pretty much as simple as that. You just want to nice to go around all the edges of your model. You want to go across your tracks. And once you've done that, have a bit of a clean up and then we'll move on to the next color. So with that done there, what we're going to do now, we're going to move on to our next colour and we're going to do the same mixture again, you know, getting at that weathering plaster, only this time we're going to come in with Dark Earth, AK081, right, and this is going to represent our sort of more, um, sort of wet mud sort of look to it all. So let's get a load of this in here. And you want the same sort of mixture. Give it a good mix. Now that's a little bit too thick. So let's get a little bit, a little bit of water, a couple of drops, give it a mix. If it's still too thick. You can add a bit more water. There we go, let's try that. Well, that's looking a bit better, yeah. So that sort of kind of paint type thickness. All right, again, you know, we can come along, can test on a um, kitchen paper towel just to see how it's, how it's going. If you like it, cool. And then, you know, we can come in with our tracks again. And um, what we can do is, again, we can really sort of start to flick this onto our tracks. I am sort of aiming for the middle to kind of sort of represent the middle, um, shall we say, being the more wetter part. Let's dip a little bit more in. Flick some more of that. That's probably a little bit too much, but it's okay. It'll, it'll draw itself in nicely. So there we go, that's making our, our tracks looking rather, rather cool and muddy. I'll finish them off camera later. And then we can then come back to our whip it here. Let's just hold that up. And again, you want to do the same process of let's protect the top of part of the hull. Now when applying this this time, you want to apply it a little bit different to what we did with the last one because uh, we want to represent you know we've we've put on our first coat which was european earth that was our first layer uh, which is supposed to represent the dried mud splatter this is supposed to represent um, wet mud splatter and you know same as what we did in the last episode um, you know water is going to be sort of more to the ground so we don't want to sort of splat this up as high as what we did with the European Earth. All right, we want to sort of try and keep it a little bit sort of low, lower, right? Representing that whole, you know, things getting drier at the top and then sort of still wetter at the bottom as water flows down, right? 
maybe even try and get these mud splatters a little bit sort of finer right just like this try and keep it nicely to the bottom right and that is simply it it's it's pretty much as easy as that um, so I'm going to go around and do the rest of that and then there's one last stage um, before this episode's over so there is um, the end result of doing our splatter effects hopefully you like that um, now really when it comes to pigments it really is um, a messy messy stage um, you really sort of want to clean up your desk and everything because it really can just um, you can be you know picking up fingerprints of pigments for like days so um, at this stage you know I like to have a good clean up and I like to just come straight in and get a matte coat on the model um, to really sort of lock in sealing those pigments to stop them sort of you know coming off on your fingers and stuff now when it comes to um, matte coats for this one and I do really prefer this it's Winsor & Newton's matte UV varnish for um, artist acrylics um, it really is a good matte UV varnish. I mean, I've used a lot out there and I just, you know, just can't help but really sort of like this. Plus, it's got this UV varnish on there, so your model's sitting in the sun and everything. It gives that little bit of extra protection to sort of stop your models from sort of fading by being in the sun and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, definitely well recommended. There is a full product view on how to use this on the Genesis Models website it's under tutorials. So, um, if you want to know how to use it, go go there and have a look. Um, but really, I, I think I'm going to leave that out, um, showing you how to do that because I say I've already got a tutorial on it. Um, and here we have. Um, this side is the side that I've put the matte UV varnish on and hopefully you can sort of see um, by just putting that matte coat on um, it sort of slightly changes the pigments a little bit sort of makes them slightly a bit darker um, and even you know if we look back at some of the weathering we've got here like our streaking and stuff that seems to come out a little bit more um, which is, is a little bit more advanced really to sort of um, try and explain it really um, it's probably best for another video but just try and keep in mind that when you put these gloss coats on to protect this and protect that um, you've really sort of got to keep in mind that the gloss coat is sort of going to darken up your colors it's sort of going to um, slightly hide your streaking and your washes and even your your filters and then when you come around to put that final matte coat on it seems to one lighten up your paintwork right so it sort of goes back to its original color it goes a bit um, lighter again and you know all your weathering like your streaking and stuff sort of comes out a little bit more so um, you've got to sort of keep that in mind when applying um, you know to keep that in mind of how things sort of come more to the foreground and it lightens up when you put that that matte coat on but I do love putting the matte coat on as you can see because it just it sort of comes starts bringing the model starting to come to the end and everything um, so yeah that is uh, the end of episode 7 of showing you how to do some splatter effects next episode we're going to be picking up our Land Rover here and that is due to the fact that you know it being um, this being a desert war fair uh, you know it's a completely sort of different ball game because we're going to be uh, well for one you're not going to be having thick mud not in the desert it's more of a dusty um, light effect sort of all on the model so um, we'll, we'll take a look at that in the next episode on um, dustying up and giving your your vehicles a just uh, a deserty look for deserty warfare.